Well, before I get ready to carve something for the day, I thought I'd show you guys the workstation that I work at. So this is a Workmate 425. I've had it since 1998. You can still get these online. They're incredibly stable. It's got some sort of a bamboo top. At least it did back when I got this one back in 1998. And it has legs that fold out underneath. Four legs, extremely sturdy, well built. Uh, highly recommended. This thing does not shift around and it's got like rubber stoppers on the feet as well. And then this is my DC 720. I've had this uh, for a long time. I bought this used on eBay and I've got this filter that I found at Home Depot 20 by or 10 by 20 by one inch that I've used Velcro to attach it to the front. I can pull it off, take it outside, shake it out, or if it gets really bad, I can just buy a new one. Um, and that actually works pretty good. It's got some dials on the side over here that you can use to turn it on and regulate the speed. And um, in addition to that, uh, it's got some plugs on the other side. So you can plug in things like your um, Bluetooth speaker, which I've got up here, all the necessary things. And then um, this is a knife bar that's magnetic. I think you can get these at Harbor Freight. Incredibly useful for putting tools up here. You know, they just they just stick. It's, you know, fantastic. Uh, so what I generally do, as you've seen, is I carve down here. All the tools get used. Uh, then over here, I hone them up. This is a little dirty, but, you know, you've seen the honing uh, video that I made. I basically just take this old ratty wire brush here and, you know, just kind of rub the, the old uh, rouge out of there. And what you see here is basically some of the steel. That's the color of the steel that, you know, I've honed out. Um, so that's here. I've got everything I need uh, right here. I've got a uh, ruler over here. But as far as the jig setup, so I'll show you what this is. So I've got, this is a hand towel that's on the top. I got a dish towel that's on the top. I got another hand towel on the top. And then I got uh, this two by four that's bolted on to this. It's probably, I don't know, about 10 inches wide, three quarter inches thick. And in the back, I've opened up this, this uh, Stanley Workmate here, and I've put a, I guess you would call it a one by four piece of oak that probably runs about 10 inches. And that is clamped down in between these two pieces of wood. And then behind it, I've screwed in to this flat piece of, wood right here. So this flat piece of wood is not going any place. And then on top of that, I've got this two by four. That's probably, oh, 18 inches, 24, something like that. And then on top of that, I've got this spare piece of trim that I've just bolted down. And as you can see, I've got all these towels that go on the top like this. And on this side of it over here, same thing. Uh, just a continuation of that base. Then I've got uh, the 2 by 4 and it's clean over here. Uh, my dog is going crazy as she does. And then this is a 3 quarter inch piece of basswood that I've used just to kind of take up the space and clamp it down. But this is it. This is where I sit and uh, listen to my Pandora and carve away. So I just wanted to do a quick video and show you guys, you know, what it's all about. And of course, I've got these lights that you can bend down. That's critical for seeing what's going on with the carving and um, showing areas, obviously, that you need to clean up and all that kind of fun stuff. So thanks for watching. And this is where it all happens. You can fit this into a corner. This is why I call it the carving corner. And you can be in a condo. You can be in a studio. And you can still carve uh, pretty much anything you want. Thanks for watching.